special teams player of the week. Ever thought you'd have that on your resume? No, never did. Um, yeah, I think there might be some pretty pissed off long snappers throughout the league, but uh, yeah, I'll take it. So uh, pretty cool and obviously uh, a cool award to get regardless and, um, you know, just kind of makes that, that day a little little more memorable, I guess. Did you go over the film on that? Did you go over Yeah, I just did. Season? Yeah, they, I thought they looked all right, to be honest with you. I was looking at the op times. They're a little higher than they usually have been. But, uh, uh, yeah, we got the job done on most of them. And um, I know that the one field goal, they got blocked. But, um, yeah, no, I, I thought I did, did all right, considering I'm not actually a long snapper. Have you so. spoken to any pissed off long snappers in your own locker room? There was a few in the locker room, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, yeah, no, it, it, I, they're they're all happy for me about it, and um, yeah, I, I, it's it's definitely a, a unique deal, that's for sure. Cole, what have you seen in the, the evolution of the screen game as the season's gone on here? It feels like that's been a, an added weapon here recently. <coughs> yeah, um, well, I, I, it's obviously been been pretty explosive for us, and um, I think that starts with the guys on the perimeter doing their thing, and. Um, you know, running off the football, and they've been doing a really good job of that in the run game, pass game, and, and in the screen game as well. So if you keep that consistent, um, you're going to able to, you know, make that that secondary of the defense pretty soft and and get them off the football, and it just creates a lot of space and a lot of room for the runner. So um, yeah, you got to give credit to those guys on the perimeter, and then obviously the offensive line doing a really good job of of getting out. And I thought Caleb's had some really cool throws for screen passes um, this year as well. So he does a good job of making that happen, keeping his eyes downfield. Like, you know, maybe it's a normal pass and then, and then dishing it off to the back tight end receiver, wh whoever it may be for that play. So um, yeah, I think, I think it's just been an all 11 thing on those. And we've had some really good execution there and, and guys, you know, doing a really good job straining to finish, you know, no one wants to be the guy that has their, their dude make the tackle. And I think everyone's kind of taking them on themselves for those type of plays. Cool. What's the next? What's the next step right now for for the offense after you had time to yeah break and now get to look at what's next? Uh, well, we we still have a lot to work to do. A lot of work to do. I think in the run game, there's still things we need to clean up. Um, you know, pass game wise, there, there's still a lot. Um, in our protection game, you know, still things that we can be better at. And um, you know, I think you look at the film and you know, there's actually some some big mistakes that we need to correct that we know of. And um, if once we go against these, you know, the better teams in the NFL and you know, we, we obviously start, you know, vying to, to make make a playoff push here as the season continues. Like, we have to ha get those things dialed in. So, um, yeah, there, there's definitely a lot to improve on. But um, as we keep playing here, we, we know our schedule is just going to get tougher and tougher. Uh, the margins are just going to continue to get more thin. And, you know, we definitely got to be on our be on our stuff if we want to come out ahead in those type of games. Speaking, yeah. of, speaking of margins, when you see the Vikings and the Lions game, I don't know if you watched it yesterday. I mean, it's yeah. going to have to come down to a game winner and mm -hmm. what happened for Minnesota. I mean, does that – as you size up the NFC North, does it kind of feel like this is going to be a division where the margin for execution is so razor thin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I think kind of what's overcome our mistakes, honestly, that we that I, that we've seen the past couple of weeks that we've had that don't make it so glaring is is the talent we do have, and um, I think we're able to make up for it at times when we have a mistake, and I think that we got the guys now on both offense and defense uh, to make up for some of those mistakes, which is really cool to have, but. You don't want to live in that world consistently. And uh, when we go against the Lions, the Packers, uh, the Vikings, they, they all got equal talent to us. And, um, you know, th that's where those mar margins come in. So, yeah, we got to be on it. And, you know, those are the type of games that we want to be playing in and we will be playing in here soon. And I think that's just kind of, uh, you know, looking at that Vikings-Lions uh, game, kind of what's to come for us, you know, coming up here shortly. As competitors, do you like that when you see the division and, and it's stacked up like that, it's so tight and – you know, all four teams with many records right now. Yeah, I don't know if I love that, but uh, <laughs> it's it definitely makes – those are the games you want to play in. So um, I'm sure here, you know, if we keep going and, and the rest of the division keeps doing what they've been doing, um, a lot of those games are going to get probably flexed to prime time as, as we get going here and as, as playoffs kind of start to shape up. And um, I know as a player, like, those are the games – I want to play in, you know, I'm sick of playing at noon all the time. And um, I like playing in those primetime slots. Like that's where everyone's watching. And, you know, those are the games you want to be in as a player. So I know, and I know as a locker room that we got a bunch of guys that, you know, we want to be, we want to be that, but um, you know, there's a lot of work to do if we want to not only get into those games towards the end of the year, but also, um, you know, come out ahead and be, be winning those games as well. So CBS takes your game now for 325 and you got Romo and it's yeah. kind of, it's the main game in the afternoon. Does that fire you guys up? Yeah. Or is that different? Though? I mean, that fires me up. I know, uh, I mean, the guys that I was around, you know, early in my career, whether it was like Jimmy or Akeem or Khalil, like they always talked about the primetime games. Like that's where everyone's watching you. And, um, 
I, there's no reason to shy away from that. You know, I know we treat everything the same in, in, in terms of our preparation, but I mean, as a player and, you know, when you're a kid growing up, like those are the games that you watch. Everyone watches the Sunday night football, Monday night football, and you, you want to be on those, those time slots. And, you know, those, those late afternoon slots are a big, are a big slot as well. So yeah, I'm pumped. I think it's a cool matchup that we got here coming up against Washington, um, a team that's done really well this year so far. And, um, you know, obviously they got a lot of talent as well, but I think it's a good match for us and it's a good opportunity to, you know, kind of show what we are now uh, in, on a national stage. Cole, a big, a big part of that draw is the two quarterbacks, Caleb yeah. and Jaden Daniels. With how much you have, you would have had invested in what the Bears did at quarterback. Did you look into Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams and all the quarterbacks? Did you like what, like watch yeah, them or you anything? Watch, you pull them up on YouTube? Or uh, not. Like I mean, I guess I watched like when they were on, you know, primetime television or whatever, you know, I know BK was over there in LSU with uh, Jaden, so kept up with them here and there while they were playing. Um, I wouldn't say it was anything in depth. I'd be lying to you if I, you know, had any sort of assessment on in that regard or watching any sort of college tape. But, um, no, I, I, I do understand, you know, how highly touted those two were coming out. Um, I definitely get that aspect of it. And, um, you know, I understand, like, the storylines going into this game of, the one and two pick, like that's always a cool, cool thing to have. And, you know, two teams that are, you know, doing well right now. So, um, yeah, definitely a cool matchup and, and a game that you want to play in. Well, there's been a, a lot of talk the last couple of weeks about the script to start the game. And mm -hmm. how do you explain from a player's perspective the difference between having a script versus the situational starter menu that, that you may have been working off of? Yeah, I mean, I, get, I think that gets overblown a little, uh, a little bit. Um, I mean, there's there's coaches that don't have scripts going into games. That's very common for a lot of for a lot of coaches. Um there's coaches that have it down to the T where it's kind of teed up really up until halftime. Like you got your, your first 15 or first 20 and your primary third down calls where, I mean, I, I could tell you it's third and six. I know exactly what play is coming in. And then you, you take that really all the way to half and then you, you regroup at half and kind of list what your opener is going to be for the half. And then you, you go on there until the end of the game, really. So uh, there, there's a bunch of ways of doing it. Um, obviously, we got to be better, you know, coming out of the game. And I think as players, like, we got to execute better because there's, there's plays that are there for us to, to hit early on. And I think the quicker that we can get in our mojo, I think we've seen that once we get going and we get that first first down and that first chunk gain, um, we really start rolling as an offense. So we just need to get to that sooner. And especially with the teams coming up that we're playing, uh, that's going to be be really important for us to be doing that early and often uh, just to give our defense rest early in the game and, and for us to be uh, to get ahead early and, and just provide a little bit more of a cushion. Yeah, but do you have a sense of being a little bit overblown on the scripted plays. Have you ever had a situation since you've been here where it was not scripted, the first 15 plays? Oh, yeah. No, I've had plenty of times. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, there's situations come in the game where, I mean, if you're backed up, start of the game, like, you can throw that first 15 out the window. Like, that's not – it's, you know, you're not running your the play you really wanted to on that first play of the game if you're at the three-yard line. Like, that just that just happens. Or I've had times where you get a, a turnover and you're in the red zone. You're not going to run that, that normal first – you're not going to your red zone script. So – uh, there's plenty of times that happens. Um, I think, you know, for us, for me as a player personally, like you, you'd like to have an idea of what, what's to come and what, what, what you can expect out there. And um, I feel like by the end of the week for me, mostly like I know, hey, if it's a third and six, third and eight call, you know, I kind of have an idea of the first three plays that Shane's going to be calling. And I hear the first two words of the play call. I already know what, what the play is. So I think that's where you kind of want to be as a player and you feel um, you feel really prepared in that essence and you can go play fast in that regard. So um, I think that's where we're getting to in that in that way. But um, yeah, I think I think you can really go either way in terms of the scripted stuff. Cool. Do you, do you have a sense of why you guys haven't started faster? I mean, we can talk about the script, but the first quarter. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't say it's the script. I'll say that uh, it's it's player execution and us being better in that regard. Um, and I think just kind of having that mentality of coming out fast and and you know, not letting our, like, not getting our beaks wet. Like, you got to get out there and be ready to roll. So whether that's how we handle our warm-up or, or whatever that is, uh, we just got to be more dialed in to start the game. And um, I know that's a focus for us, you know, this week. Cool. In, in recent years, there's been Bears offenses that are at a little bit of a roll, and you think it's going to break, and, and it doesn't. Is there anything about this role you're on now mm -hmm. that you think is uh, looks like it's going to be sustaining? Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, for me, it's just hard not to say the quarterback. Like, the quarterback looks really good, and um, he's super talented, and, can do a lot of really good things with his legs and with his arm. And um, I think the things that he does in the pocket uh, as a, as a rookie is really impressive. And I think those are the things that you look at that you can, that you can rely on week to week, whether that's the intermediate or short passing game. And I think, I think Caleb's done a really good job at that. So um, yeah, it's just hard for me not to say the quarterback, you know, there's a lot of other elements to it as well. Like obviously protecting and 
doing all those things. But uh, I think Caleb's just got a knack for playmaking and, and making plays happen. What's a bye week like when you're on a roll like that? I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure even at this early, fairly early stage, you appreciate the break. But on the other hand, yeah. you seem like you've, you've a pretty good role you here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're, I guess you're more talking about like momentum, like keeping yeah, momentum yeah, right. rolling. You wanna yeah, going, you know, you want to keep going versus. Yeah, I understand that. I think um, I will say I think guys were ready for a little bit of a break, considering how early we reported for camp and and the camp that we went through. And you got to remember that that for us, that's when we started, like in our heads. That's when we, the physical stuff starts. And I know we get that little break before week one, but you're still feeling it from from camp. So I thought that was uh, it was big time to have this week off when it came. I, I really believe that and. You know, now we're kind of looking at it for us as we got this next six week stretch before the before our mini bye week after that Thursday game. So that's kind of the next six games that we're we're kind of preparing for physically here um, as we go week to week of knowing what you kind of have to get through, and then you get to that Thursday night, or I think that's the Thursday afternoon game for uh, for Thanksgiving, and then you get after that, and you know you have that whole weekend and the rest of the week to heal up. So um, I think physically speaking, that's kind of how we're we're breaking it down, and uh, when we look at this the rest of the season so far. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. How do you uh, react to the division standings where you guys are at, but also where the rest of the, the pack is here? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's pretty crazy, right? I think, you know, and obviously we know those teams pretty well, um, but it's, you know, good football being played right now. I think, um, you know, yesterday was probably the first time we got to sit down, or at least me, sit down and, and just watch some football for a second. And, um, it's at a high level right now, man. So we're excited for the stretch we have coming up, for sure. I know the big calling card for you guys in camp and OTAs now is we're a top five defense. Mm -hmm. Do you guys feel like you have reached that status of top five defense? I mean, I feel like we've I feel we've played well, right? Um, done some really good things, um, you know, on, on all in all facets of the game. But I think for us, you know, we know that we can be a lot better. Um, it's a group that's that's not complacent with anything that we do, and that starts with, um, you know, Coach Washington and, and those things. But I think, you know, we know, and we kind of looked at some things today, just kind of reflecting on, um, you know, the first couple parts of the of the season and, and what we did well, what we know we can clean up. What specifically, if, if you can share with us? <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, specifics, you know, it's kind of, we'll keep that in house, but I think just in general, you know, giving up some, some big plays, I think at times and, um, you know, getting teams behind the sticks in a way is, is something that we're looking at too. So, um, you know, I think from top to bottom, we know there's just a, a couple things that each group can do better, um, uh, including myself. So we're excited to, to get things going. TJ, at this point in your career, you've seen a lot of quarterbacks, so you kind of have a database when you face someone like Matt Stafford. Mm -hmm. What's it like when you are trying to learn a new quarterback like you'll face this week and at, at least one more, I think, the rest of the year. Yeah, um, I mean, especially, you know, in the league nowadays, every every quarterback is, is, is good at certain things, and I think this this kid provides a lot of challenges. Um, you saw what he did even just last week uh, with his legs and, and things like that, and um, I think their offensive scheme is, is firing on all cylinders right now. Uh, they got really good skill, a good online, you know, two really good backs, three three good backs, really. Um, he's doing a good job of kind of facil facilitating all that. So I think it's going to be a good challenge for us, kind of a rules game with all the things they provide up front and, um, you know, all the all the gap schemes they give you, but also have the element of him keeping the ball and uh, doing some good things in space. So it'll be good. Did you have a good defense? That's a lot of good depth. What do you think, anything in particular about the way some of the guys stepped in, like Blackwell and Hicks and Jones and, even up even in front of you, is there anything that differentiates them from other? Is it just is this pretty normal, or you know, what? What about with the, the job that they've done? What strikes you about what they've done? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, even just last game, just kind of seeing it, um, Elijah and, and like you said, Blackwell, um, Jalen Jones, you know, guys who really stepped up, but. Since I've gotten here, I feel like it's been a group who's, who's super excited and want to be around each other and super um, understanding of what we're trying to get done as a defense. So um, it's football, you know, and things things happen, guys go down and things like that. But um, there's never, you know, a blinker. There's never a hesitation with who's coming in. Um, and I thought those guys, they played outstanding for what we asked them to do and uh, making plays, you know, Black making that play and everything like that was um, it was fun. And Elijah picking the ball up. Uh, we'd like some, some more yards on the return, but it was great for, for what he did. And uh, it's a fun group, so I was excited for those guys for sure. With how important the three technique position is for linebacker success, what's your perspective on the growth that Jervon's shown through the first six weeks? 
yeah, those are those are our guys. You know, we need them. Um, but I think that whole unit. But but Dex has been he's been awesome this year. I think he's came in with a, a chip on his shoulder um, along with all those guys. But he's just shown his growth quickly. I feel like you know he's able to to rush the passer. And I think in the run game, um, what they do of, of anchoring those blocks and, and holding those guys off so that you know we can run free um, is is huge for what we do. But I think. He's shown that he can kind of anchor those blocks and then get off and make a play too, which is you know next level stuff. And um, he's got a great group to learn from in the, in the, with some of those guys. And you can tell that they're really starting to find their their flow and, and get into their rhythm. You guys are coming off the London week and then the bye week. What do you guys need to do to make sure you're kind of locked in so you can pick up where you left off right away? Yeah, I think Flus does a good job of kind of, you know, getting our legs going, but not, you know, rushing anything back. And, um, you know, we were right back at it today with the game plan and doing walkthroughs and things like that to get our mental kind of rolling. Um, you know, but we're excited. We knew that this break was coming. We kind of have everything timed out that way. And, um, you know, our coaches and, and everything, we have, a, we have a really good plan for going forward, just not only our mental, but our bodies as well to kind of get us reacclimated a little bit. TJ, when you force the fumble at the start of that third quarter, what's kind of the coaching point that we see a lot of defenders punch at the ball and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but what kind of made that one work? Yeah. Um, I mean, first, you know, it's just kind of trying to be around the ball as much as you can and uh, kind of a broken play there where they, you know, found a, a little hole and um, – it's one of those where the guy's going down and, and normally, you know, when, when they're going down to the ground, they have to kind of release one of their arms from the ball to brace themselves from the ground. Um, so anytime you can, you know, throw a shot in there, either, even if it's blind, um, you know, some good things will come from it. But you've seen it, I feel like, year after year now becoming a, a bigger thing um, because it's, it's being coached well. It's, you know, being where we rep it all the time here in practice. And um, like I said, anytime you can kind of throw, throw a shot and just kind of hope and see what happens. Uh, it works out. I was, you know, I haven't had one of those like true ones since since probably college. So it was it was cool to finally, you know, actually hit the ball and it pop out. And you know, you go through all those times where you do attempts and you're just hitting the guy in the ribs or something like that. So it was cool to actually hit the ball and um, you know make a play for sure. Is that a habit that was instilled by this coaching staff or something that you did when you were in Philly too? I think all teams try to rep it right, um, but it's one of those to where. You know, you really have to detail exactly what you're trying to do for it to work. And um, we, we do a similar drill to what the punch actually was, and uh, it, it worked out. So I know that makes them excited, too, when, when the drill translates. Do you see P9 Tillman afterwards? I did not. I saw him there. Um, but I know that was – obviously, I watched him growing up for a long time do that, you know, numerous times. Um, so to, you know, do it here, I think I think it's cool when a play is named after you. You know, you must have done, done it pretty well. Um, so it was cool for sure. Thank you. Appreciate you guys.